I've been slowly pulling the mulch. What's really important is that I need to repot some palm trees, the spindle palm and then my two mule palms over here. Then I need a big, cheap pot. I'd say I got just about everything I needed. Anyway, how The car is pretty full. I got this pot so that I can bury part of it in the ground. And that's a lot of water. I might need to go out there and dig that trench out because I don't want this water washing into the pool. See what I was talking about? I mean, this is in clay. It'd be nice to have a tarp to lay out so that when I'm doing my plantings this year, I'm not getting soil over the patio. Okay, kind of an abrupt change, I know. I finished potting up the big spindle palm and then I was like, I need a tarp, and it started, it's raining. Just a drizzle, though. Could be way worse than this, but I'm at Home Depot, and I don't, I don't know what's going on anymore. I went out to lunch with a friend who was nearby, so I was like, this seems like a good place to stop in. Ideally, it wouldn't be raining. Have a better look at the plants. Wow, they have a lot. <laughs> Encore azaleas are getting smaller and smaller. Those tiny little things. That actually feels like it's rooted in there. I'm surprised by that. There have been times I've picked up plants and particularly from Home Depot and it'll be a little plant in a big pot and it's like still rooted in. The root ball still looks like the pot size smaller, which really annoys me, but that's rooted in there. At least that one was. Hmm. These are pretty, but they remind me a lot of the hibiscus I was talking about last week with the plant halls that have the rosy center remind me of Rose of Sharon, but that's that's way more colorful than Rose of Sharon. <laughs> it's still, it's, I don't, it bothers me. Bothers is a strong word. Just not my favorite. These are pretty. These little mandevillas. Diplodinia, sorry. I actually had thought about using diplodinias in the pots with the palms, have those uh, Vista bubble gums come over the side with the potato vine on the other side than having these as something taller in the middle, but I just feel like it's, it's a lot of pink and they're different shades. I'm also very much overthinking things. They also have white and red. I don't think I'd want red though. At least not for the pots around the pool. A little bit too bright and I don't want the, what, the pink and the red, kind of Valentine's Day-ish. <laughs> Look at you just hanging out on the pavement being adorable. Magical Hydrangea Revolution Blue. I don't know if these are the same revolutions as the ones I'm thinking of, but the revolutions, there was a Revolution Hydrangea a while ago. I haven't seen it in a few years, but it like kind of changes colors. Maybe this is that, I have no idea, but it's cute. Whoa, that is an intense yellow. Neat. I was just wondering where the rest of the hydrangeas are. I found them. Kind of hard to get to. Hydrangeas, hibiscus, sorry. There's one that's calling, oh, there's two that's calling to me. Hello, oh, that's pretty. Look at you. Those ruffles are really cool. It sets it apart from the others. It's, that's very cute, nice and frilly. Can't say I like any of these enough to be hauling them around in the rain though. I mean, I don't know, this, one, this, is, this one's really pretty. <laughs> Not $30 pretty though, Never mind. Oh, well, they got the buried treasure red. Buried treasure red strawberries. I love these. They're so pretty. I don't know if I. I do. I do want them. I was hoping to get some last year, but I didn't see them. I don't. I guess they weren't out yet. But maybe I just seen them online. I need to go find a tarp. I'm gonna return to those. Okay. Seems about right. And it's brown. See, the problem is the tarps I have are like neon blue and humongous, like way too big. Six by eight. Brown. I want it to look okay when I'm filming videos if that's in the picture. I mean, brown's the color of soil, so I guess that'll work. I mean, that's the alternative, so. Brown it is. Check out the house plants for a second. What do we got here? Some nice Cordelin Fruticosas. $20. Why is this $20? This is Home Depot. That didn't, nope, nope. Home Depot, you need to stay in your lane. That's too much for something like that. Some nice little polka dot plants here. These are pretty. Over here is a peperomia. Looks okay. And, well, it's rubbed up. You can see that it actually did have its full name on it, which is nice. Really nice, actually. It's not just like a peperomia. I think there's some Marble Queen pothos. And here's the smaller assorted plants. Becoming more and more common. Some agonimias, dracanias. 
ginger, Calathea. I'm a little bit surprised to see those. But I feel like I've seen on Instagram some people posting about picking some of these guys up from Home Depot, so that makes sense. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess that's good enough. I'm going to grab some strawberries and get out of here. Ooh, hold on. These are cute. They put them in these little plastic barrels. $20 isn't terrible considering what's in these various pots. That's not too bad, but wait, what's going on there? That's not a great pairing. I mean, I guess... Maybe, no, I don't think so. I'm setting people up for a little bit of failure with some of those plants. It's the next day. It uh, just kept on raining yesterday, so I couldn't get anything done. But I have been out here all morning excavating the excess mulch from overwintering the bananas and the gingers and whatnot. And I'm on wheelbarrow number like six or seven. What I'm doing is I'm taking it down to the berm and I'm spreading it across the back of that berm to help build that back up. So works out well because I needed the mulch anyways. I still need to get back over here where these other gingers are coming up and I just, I try to get the mulch up like right before they would emerge because if you chop those off, they'll keep growing, but if they get to a certain size and you cut the top off, you may not get flowers from them. Hey, pumpkin. Hi. What are you doing? Hey, baby girl. Let's go say hi to pumpkin. What are you doing? Oh, did I scare you? What are you doing? You so... Yeah, I know. You can't come out here. You'd get eaten. Dude, you're an indoor kitty. Sorry. Sorry. I'll build you a catio someday. Yeah, that's, that's what's going on right here. But, uh, so what I was saying is I, I don't want to go in with the shovel to remove that mulch, so I need to put on some gloves and just kind of try and pull it out. Everything is wet, soaking wet. I've had to drain the pool down three times in the last few days because it keeps getting to a point of almost overflowing. Oh, and I finished the palm tree repotting. I know I just kind of like moved on from that. It just kept raining and I just, I had to get stuff done. It settled crooked, so I need to fix that, but I want to wait till the ground dries out a little bit because I don't want to end up creating like a hard clay shell down there. So I'm going to wait to fix that for a few days. Hopefully the rain will let up sooner than later. I mean, it's Friday, so I kind of got to wrap things up here, but I just, I need to accomplish something. It's been a difficult week. Not like a bad week. It's just whenever it's been nice, which was only like two days, like a few hours for a couple days, I had other things I had to be doing. So it's like kind of nice out, I suppose. It's gloomy, but um, it stopped raining for a while. So I'm, that's what, that's going on. I'm moving mulch and this Alberta spruce, I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut that down because I'm done with it. It's got to go. Looks terrible. I keep talking about it. The top of it's died off. It's just, it's done. It's, uh, I just, I, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut it down or I'm going to try to anyways. That's all I have is this lovely 14 volt, like 12 or 13 year old Black & Decker Sawzaw. Did I say Black & Decker? <laughs> Black & Decker. I don't think it's going to do the trick, but if not, I'll grab a handsaw. Either way, it's got to go. Oh, and then the rest of what I'm doing here is I'm redigging this trench out. There's supposed to be a nice line that goes through here along the patio and uh, a trench, a drainage trench full of gravel that leads down to a drain that's sort of in the center of the garden from over there all the way through in here. But, you know, winter and the mulch and everything. So that's at least I will have accomplished something when I'm done with that. Oh, that looks weird. That looks really weird. I'm not used to that. That palm frond, that's it's gonna drive me crazy. Maybe I should make like a stint or something, pull it back up. I just, no, I don't like change, but it's necessary. I'm just not used to being able to see the wall and I can see now that this light up here needs to be painted. Didn't notice that before, even though I don't think the tree was covering that. It just distracted from it apparently. But I did, look at, Got it out of there. And look, at, you can see why this had to go, right? The top was done. It was all dead on one side, so. Sorry, spruce. That's gonna make a mess to clean. Oh, I can use my tarp. Go inside and get the, t uh, I'm gonna go around. That would have made such a mess on the floor and I just swept and mopped. I leave it to me, I would have done that. Needed to get out here and get this stuff out anyways. Any way. I always say any ways. It's really any way. Okay. Grab it. Hey, hey, there we go. It's, this probably isn't that exciting to you guys. Wait, why did I put this all the way? I grabbed a very short extension cord. Why would I put this over here? You need to come this way. 
bring this over here so I can cut it up. There, I think the cord will reach. Oh, the cord. I end up using it. Oh, see what happened? Look at that. Sitting there for like five minutes. It's these grackle birds. They poop everywhere. I mean everywhere. It's all over the sides of the pool. They drop their little... You don't think you can see it. There's little tiny dots in there. They bag their poop up from the babies and they drop it in the water, which is genius as far as like nature is concerned and survival because then you can't smell it. But the, I swim in here. Rude. So I'm going to, I got to, nothing's ever easy. But my point was I had to bring out this electric saw because that saw's off, which is way too weak. It wasn't, it wasn't cutting it. <laughs> Get it. I'd have to go inside to get something to clean this off, so I just went in and threw on some gloves that I have out here. I'm not going to do this with one hand and my tripod's inside and I'm muddy, so it's you're not missing anything. I'm just cutting some branches off. Alright, I feel really bad about not going and getting my tripod when I did this because this seemed like something would have been really satisfying to record. It just chopped right through there like butter. And now to clean up, all I gotta do is just take the tarp right here and I can flip it over and drag it over to the yard waste and dump it. So nice. Best $9 I've ever spent. And since I had my gloves on, I went ahead and just like a minute ago in the video when I was talking about how I need to pull the mulch out from around those gingers. I didn't scoop that over here so that I can shovel it up, get it into the wheelbarrow and spread it out. So now like, I'm not done, but huge progress. I know I didn't film a lot of it because like how boring is that? Just like, I'm just shoveling mulch for the most part. But I'm gonna go through and try and get this trench dug out. Uh, preferably around this entire garden bed because it's just it's spring it's supposed to keep on raining so I think that would be a good idea to get that done oh and I went ahead and I dropped a croton in the ground over here because it's just I always put one there and I think it looks pretty little pop of color now I have to decide what's going to go in place of this Alberta spruce which I'm I, I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do yet I have a lot of ideas these ferns come like uh, depending on the heat, usually around July to August, they start to look pretty shabby and I cut them back or I just like let them go and just let them keep looking kind of bad. But uh, they, it's not going to look this beautiful and lush in a couple of months, but they look really pretty in the springtime. But as far as that goes, also, I think that's going to be really easy to remove because the ground's really wet around it. So I should probably do that either today or tomorrow before the ground completely dries out. But I'm thinking maybe another banana because I have bananas right there behind this other stump needs to be removed and then there's bananas down there so they'd be there there and here and I already have to mulch the spot because of the gingers which you can't see yet but they're coming up so that might work I feel like the leaves might really get in people's faces though when they're coming in and out of that door so I'm not positive just some stuff to think about it would also be nice to put some kind of other evergreen there so maybe a holly I don't know I don't know. I'm just glad that I got that part chopped out. Digging up that root ball, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Oh, and these are ostrich ferns. Someone asked me last week. They're ostrich ferns. They're hardy to about zone five. They can take a lot of sun as far as ferns are concerned. But like I kind of alluded to earlier, when it gets really hot in the summertime, they sort of crisp up and don't look as good when they're getting a lot of sun. Like bright morning sun, fine for the most part. But afternoon sun, not so much. And this is afternoon sun here. I also realized I didn't really explain this mulch situation. So if you're new here and you weren't here in the fall, there's a lot of tropicals in the ground or tropicals. There's uh, butterfly gingers, bananas, and I put tons way. I went way overboard with the mulch last fall to protect them during the winter time. And uh, the plan the whole time was that I'm going to take that excess, spread it back there on that berm to help build that berm back out because it's, you know, eroded and what over time. So that's, I should have said that earlier. Sorry. I was also thinking... In place of this Alberta spruce, maybe putting a palm, a hardy palm, or I should say hardy palm tree. I don't want to go with a windmill palm. I love my windmill palms. I love them so much, and I think that that would look nice there, but they cost a fortune. They're really expensive palm trees. The ones I have, I got when they were pretty small. I've had them for many years, and they've grown. They grow a lot faster in the ground, but it's just not a gamble I want to take. I don't want to spend 300 bucks on something and have it just die. They can take a lot of cold, though. Um, whatever I do put here, if it is a palm, I'll have to, you know, enclose it and wrap it in lights and protect it and everything. But I think that might be kind of fun to do for the channel anyways. I used to do that. I used to have a pendu palm right here in this corner where that cherry trunk is, just next to it. For about five or six years, it got really, really big. And one year we had an ice storm and nobody was around and it caved the whole thing in and it just, it didn't make it. I don't think a pendo will work here, though. That's the butia, the butia capitata. 
because they get really, really wide, and that's definitely over time going to be in the way. They're hardy to, they're like solidly hardy to zone eight. I'm in 6B, so I would have to protect it a lot. Windmill palms are like pretty good, zone seven, 7B, but you still need to sight them properly and watch out for them. And um, plenty of people grow them in zone six, though, so you just have to protect them. The uh, other option would be a palmetto, sable palmetto, which are not as hardy as a windmill palm, debatably. I mean, is that a word? Debate it, debate it, but do you know what I'm saying? I've actually found when it comes to the palmettos, sable minor, sable palmetto, they seem to be a little bit more hardy or maybe just more tolerant of like winter wetness. Either way, I'll have to protect it. And the palmettos do not ship well. Not at all. So there's the ginger coming up there. They uh, they have a very soft heart. So when they get rattled around a box, it's not great for them. And they're a type of palmer when you cut the root, the entire root dies. That's why they're oftentimes sold as sticks. Just big sticks with most of the foliage cut off because you gotta put them in the ground, they have to re-root. And then you have to wait a few years for them to flush back out. I don't know if I have the patience for that, but I know a place where I can get a uh, pretty like decent size, not huge, but like ones with probably three to four feet of clear trunk on them for a really good price, but I've tried it twice before in the past and they didn't ship well and they ended up dying. So it's kind of a gamble. I can talk to them like, can you stuff this box full of newspaper and we'll see what happens. And the other thing is the first year, it's just gonna be a stick with like a spear coming out the top. Is that something that we want to do here? I think it might look cool and they grow slowly so it'll be easy to keep it protected for many years over here as far as you have to build a little small enclosure around it. That's not a big deal though because they grow so slow. That another option would be like a Washingtonia Mexican fan pump but they grow so fast that eventually I mean within a few years it's gonna be tall and really hard to protect and I don't I don't want that. I just want to keep it simple that's the whole point there. The palmetto and that's the other thing is it's first winter it'd be very dangerous for it because it won't have really rooted out it won't have much foliage on it so there's like not much to lose if it, something does go bad so I have to think about that one but I think it would look really cute there. I had thought about I haven't gotten I've cleaned a little bit here but I haven't like done much. I have thought and talked about putting a pindu palm here, but they're incredibly expensive. Because the thought, the idea was that I would put the pindu palm there and protect that during the winter time, but this is a really cold spot. I've had bananas not come back for me, so uh, like that seems like kind of a dumb thing to put there, at least this year, because the main thing is just, I, I want to divert the funds that I would have used for a pindu palm for this hedge that I talked about in last week's vlog, the skip laurels. So, and I talked to, I have like a palm tree dealer, <laughs> so if you, if you, again, if you're new here, I have other palm trees that you guys haven't seen yet that will be delivered in a few weeks. They go off to a big greenhouse every single year. It's my splurge, that's my indulgence, it's my thing, and, um, but the, my, my palm tree dealer who does all of that, uh, told me that, like, they can give me a really good price on another queen palm, and I'm like, I might just do that, just throw another cheap queen palm in there this year, or just have them take it out and do nothing. So, well, I'm, I'm, I gotta figure that one out. But because I love my palm trees, more than likely there will be a new queen palm over there. And I'll save the pindu palm for next year for that spot. Look how much these bananas have grown. They're getting so big already. They're all like twisty and fun looking. Oh, and the final point I didn't make yet about the spot where that sable palm would be going, where that stump is. This is a very warm microclimate in my garden. I do mulch things very heavily, but those hedichiums, which are hardy zone seven and up, I have a needle palm here that I don't even protect, and then this crinum lily, not hardy here, the banana, like everything seems to come back over here. So it would probably be a good location for it. And there's an electrical outlet right here, so I can run lights and a heater to it if need be. Let me know what you think. I've been talking too much this vlog. It's just, this is gonna be so long, I'm so sorry. Okay, now I'm gonna do what I've been talking about this entire time. I'm gonna finish getting the mulch out. There's more mulch that has to be dug out there and back there and over there and then around that palm tree. I'll get to that side another time though. Sorry, that was all hand there. And uh, start digging this trench out. It's not gonna look great in this video because I have to dig it out and then refill it with fresh gravel, but that's okay. At least I'll get the lines done. And see, this is all from the storms, from all the water washing out. It was just about to the edge of the pool. So that has to be dug out to lead to the drains. There's drains over here that'll take that away. So that's, I'm still talking, sorry. All right, look at that. The trench is dug. I normally cup my hand over this side of the mic so the audio is different, that's why. But look at, I know it doesn't look great, but I'm happy to be able to see clean lines in here. And then I can show you the whole point. I'm not gonna show you that, hold on. There we go. See, so it gives me some place to wash all the muck off 
and then it goes down to that drain. So helps keep things much more clean and tidy. And I know that it doesn't look great, but everything's just muddy and nasty out here right now. And then I have this pile of rock over here, this gravel. It's not gravel, it's rock. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of line the edge of this with that. That was there before, I just pulled it up so I could clean things out. I take this stuff and just kind of plop it in here. It's more porous, so stuff can still sort of get around it, and it kind of creates like a faux beach wall, but I don't have a ton of it. And I'm in St. Louis. Down in Florida, you can get this stuff super cheap. Up here, no. And this is actually from an old saltwater aquarium I broke down. And there's that. I know, nothing crazy. I'm just really glad to have like gotten something done that needed to be done. That rain, like I said earlier, just threw off the entire week. I have to stop the rock at the sprinkler because that's all I had. But I'm okay with that. I kind of like portioning things out a little bit. And, uh, you know, yeah, it doesn't look fantastic. But give me something to do with the rock. It, I felt wasteful throwing it away. So it works, and I know it looks extra mucky right now. It's gonna take a while to get that clay and stuff washed through there. <laughs> and then I still have to do all of this right here because that all comes down over here to the same drain. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that though. It's It's been enough. This is a long enough vlog and I feel accomplished. That's all I really cared about. And now that these things are happening over here, next week, hopefully, weather depending, can start planting. I haven't really started to move the plants out yet. I did move a bird of paradise out and the storm got its new growth, so that's, that's nice. But with this weather we've been having, I want to make sure that there's a solid 48 hours so I can spray everything and let it dry and respray and whatnot. So hopefully that will happen next week, but I can't say for sure. This is all. I'm really excited to get this tossed on that tarp and get... All this. Oh, I'm so excited for things to look clean. Pretend you didn't see that. That's not where I decided to keep that pot. If you remember, I had a ton of pots over here that I was trying to figure out what to do, what to do with them, and that's just one of them's back there. But don't, you didn't see it. Don't worry about it. Stop judging me. It's fine. I still have a lot of mulch to get scooped up and then get that mulch spread around over here. It's the back side of this berm is where I'm trying to kind of build things out a little bit. Lots of stuff to cut out. I'm actually pretty excited, but it's not stuff that's fun to vlog about. So that's all that'll do for now. Again, weather permitting, I'm going to get these potted up next week. I really wanted to get that done this week, but it's just not happening. These got soaked with water and I need a helper to help me get them back out so I can pot them up. I hope everybody's doing well. Everybody give well wishes to Toby. He has a tummy ache. He's not feeling great. Poor Toby. Poor Toby. He'll be okay though. He's still eating and drinking, just throwing up everywhere. So that's been fun. You haven't thrown up today though, have you? Yeah, you're feeling a little bit better, but he just, oh, poor baby. No fever or anything. So just got to keep an eye on him. If he's not feeling better tomorrow, he's going into the vet for sure. You good boy. It's okay. You're gonna be okay, Tobes. I hope everybody's doing well, having a fantastic day, fantastic life, and everything's just going wonderfully and beautifully for you. I have all my social media linked down below. Follow me and I'll follow you back. I'm on Instagram far more than anything else. I have a lot of fun being plant nerds with everybody on there. And if you could like the video, that'd be fantastic. Makes a big difference for the channel, and I appreciate it. And subscribe as well, and hit that notification bell, because I upload multiple times a week. Oh, and some people have asked what variety of hydrangea this is. I don't remember. Let me see. This is the Merit Supreme Hydrangea. Hydrangea. Not hardy in my zone, so it's kind of like a fun floral hydrangea. Look how much these Tillandsias have colored up since I brought them out and hung them up. These look so they're so much more pink than they were in the video from the prior video of this one when I hung them up out here. Oh my gosh, okay, Toby just threw up everywhere, so I think I'm just gonna call the vet. We're gonna go to the vet today just to be safe. I'm gonna wrap things up, not turn the camera around. You don't want to see what I have to go clean up. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, fantastic life, everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing.